In this video, we're going to continue discussing chemical equilibrium and derive the equilibrium constant for a reaction. So from previous videos, we have the expressions above here, where we have the chemical potential, mu, of a given chemical substance, I, as a function of temperature and pressure. And that is equal to some standard chemical potential at a given temperature for that substance, plus, temp plus gas constant times temperature, times the natural log of the ratio of its partial pressure divided by some standard pressure here, which is going to be one bar. So if your pressure is in units of bar, then you don't need to include this uh, P naught here. But if it is not in bar, like if it's in atmospheres or millimeters of mercury, then just use whatever is the equivalent of one bar in that unit system. And then we previously described the Gibbs energy change of reaction, which is equal to the partial derivative of the Gibbs energy with respect to the extent of reaction, as we defined in the previous video, at constant temperature and pressure. And that's equal to the sum over all products, J, the stoichiometric coefficient times chemical potential, minus, same thing for the reactants, sum over all reactants, I, stoichiometric coefficient times chemical potential. So we have some hypothetical reaction here. Note that they're all four in the gas phase. So this type of expression ap applies here because this is a gas phase reaction. So we have new A moles of A reacting with new B moles of B to form new C moles of C and new D moles of D. So using these expressions here, and this, for this specific reaction, let's define what the uh, Gibbs energy change of reaction is for this specific reaction in terms of chemical potentials and partial pressures. So we're going to have delta Rg. It's going to be equal to nu d mu d naught of t plus nu c mu c naught of t minus nu b mu b naught of t minus nu a mu a naught of t. So that includes all the standard chemical potential part for all four of these reactants and products. And now we want to include the pressure part. So we're going to add plus rt. We're going to factor out the rt in front of this uh, log this this and that so we want the chemical potential times stoichiometric coefficient again so we have nu d times natural log of partial pressure of d divided by standard pressure pd over p naught plus nu c log pc over p naught minus nu b log PB over P naught minus nu A log partial pressure of A divided by standard pressure and then close that brace there. Okay, so these eight terms here represent our total Gibbs energy change of the reaction and we're going to define a quantity which is going to be very convenient for us which is called the reaction quotient. So we have Q is equal to, we have PC over P naught. <clears throat> then you'll notice whenever you have a, an, a value times a logarithm, that is equivalent to the logarithm of that quantity to the power of that value. So nu d log p d over p naught is equal to log of p d over p naught to the nu d power. So in our reaction quotients here, we take this partial pressure and we take it to the power of the given stoichiometric coefficient. So nu c, same thing for nu d and p d. So those all had positive values. And then similarly for a logarithm, when we have a negative logarithm, so the log, the log of minus x, it, or minus the log of x is equal to plus the log of 1 over x. So for these with the negative coefficient for our products, 
we can put those on the denominator. We're going to have PA over P0 times to the power of nu A and PB over P0 times to the power of nu B. So if we took the natural log of this, this value Q here, what we would have is everything inside the, these brackets. The, the log of Q, so RT log Q is equivalent to all four of these terms here. So then what we can say here is we can define our standard Gibbs energy of reaction as including all these standard chemical potential part. So defining our two parts here. We have delta RG equals delta R G naught plus RT log Q. And as I said, we have delta R G naught, which is the standard reaction Gibbs energy. And that is equivalent to these four terms up here <coughs> as this Q term, the log of this Q term, RT log Q, is equivalent to these terms right there. So if I have RT log Q there, it's equivalent to me underlining those terms. Okay, and some other things we can say is that we know that at equilibrium, that's where the Gibbs energy isn't changing. So partial derivative of the Gibbs energy with respect to extent of reaction at temperature and pressure, constant temperature and pressure, which is equal to the reaction Gibbs energy, we know that's going to be zero at equilibrium. because that's the definition of equilibrium where the Gibbs energy isn't changing anymore with respect to a given variable. So that means our delta G naught or delta R G naught is going to be equal to minus RT log Can have PC to the new C, PD to the new D, PA to the new A, PB to the new B, and that is all at their equilibrium values, so at their equilibrium pressures of C, D, A, and B. And that's just because we have delta RG here, if we set that equal to zero, and then we subtract uh, this RT log Q to the other side, we have that delta RG naught equals minus RT log Q at equilibrium. In fact, let me write that out. This expression arises here because we can take this and then set that equal to delta RG naught equals minus RT log Q of equilibrium. So we have some given Q here, which is, the, which is the reaction quotient at equilibrium that we have up there. And so there's a special name for this reaction quotient at equilibrium, and that is the equilibrium constant. And sometimes if we're defining that in terms of pressures, we have a subscript for pressure. So Kp is equal to Keq, and Kp is called the equilibrium constant. Okay, so we have, given this equilibrium constant here, we have that our standard Gibbs energy change of reaction is equal to minus RT log Kp, and Kp is a function of temperature. So one thing to note here is that Kp is not a function of pressure. So at, uh, at a given temperature, 
there's going to be some fixed number here for our equilibrium constant and the extent of reaction will go to whatever value is necessary to reproduce this equilibrium constant such that the reaction quotient becomes the equilibrium constant. So this equilibrium constant is a very uh, powerful value which controls a lot of what the extent of reaction is which tells us about how the reaction goes forward or backward and how many moles of products and reactants exchange in order to achieve this equilibrium and this balance detailed by our standard Gibbs energy, the equilibrium constant, and uh, any other values that are in play.